Hello and welcome to my little uh, video here. I will uh, present, uh, give an introduction to my Livestock FEM uh, plugin. The Livestock FEM plugin is a 2D uh, calculation tool for, fi fine element calculation tool for uh, frames and truss structures in Rhino Grasshopper. It's a part of the Livestock uh, project at DTU. Uh, therefore, you need to install the Livestock Python environment first. You can uh, do it. You can see a guide to that on this link. The livestock fem, uh, you can find that on uh, on GitHub. You can also follow the all the development of the code in here. Uh, installing this plugin, download the zip file, and then uh, extract the content. Do it here. This folder should go into uh, let's see. Go into here. This location. It's, it should shall be there, or else the plugin doesn't work. And the other folder is the user objects for Grasshopper, so you can just drag them into the canvas of Grasshopper. Um, first. To need to get the plugin to work, you need to use this component. You see, I've already started, uh, and you input your Python executor, uh, your C Python executor path, which is this for me. Probably something else for you, maybe. Um, so now we want to get started. I made this uh, bridge of lines in the uh, Rhino. You can do it in Grasshopper. Using it, use it for optimization purposes. Uh, then you can, so you can optimize uh, some of the parameters. But I just made it in Rhino for this example. First, we define the topology. Put in the curves, and we will see uh, our nice topology here: the element numbers and node numbers. Then we want to define some supports. We make them cantilevered, so all these are set as true by default. Put in the pie notes. Oh, sorry, not that one. Put it in here. Put the pie elements in here. Pie doves in here. And we want to put the elements in node 0, 2, 8, and 9. So 0, 2, 8, 9. Nodes 9, yes. As you can see, now we have specified some uh, our supports, and they are placed correctly, and they are locked in all three directions. Then we put on some material, using this define material component. You can see all the components up here. We got six defi definition components, run uh, one uh, final element calculation engine, two library lookup components, and uh, visualize forces component. A combined load component, a string to geometry component, and a subdivide element component. We want to put all the same uh, same material on all our elements. That's why we can just put this in. We've got some default E modulus values and section areas, but if you want to specify exactly what uh, profile or material you use, you can use these two uh, lookup. Uh, library lookup components got a list of all available profiles and all available materials. For materials, we want to use steel. There's 235. Let's see that. Got this one here. And you can see we get the e modulus that we need for this one. We want to look up the section area. Let's say we want an IP 220. It's not case insensitive, so you don't have to write it with capital letters. Fancy it right here. We've got the initial strong axis, which we want to use, and the section area. So that's how we get all our materials defined. Then we want to put on a non uniform load on top of these four elements. We can just put one on each of the element, but we can also subdivide these to get a more, even more uh, precise. Uh, Calculation. So that for that we use the subdivide element component. We want to put it on two, six, ten, and fourteen element. So 
like 2, 6, 10, and 14. Put in our pi notes, so a string, Python string, describing the notes, pi elements, elements, the pi duff, describing the degrees of freedom, and because we already uh, defined our pi materials, we put in this as well. Each element is going to get divided in ten pieces, so that's fine. So we get a list of our new indices and how many completed Python strings. Then we want to put on a self-weight for our structure. That means we want to put it on all elements. To put it on all elements, we need to use this component. This generates the geometry from the Python strings. Put the pi nodes, pi elements. You see we got our 51 line elements. Here's the list length. Here, yeah. the series. Let's use that as the count. So that's all the elements. Then we use uh, put in the pi nodes, pi elements. The direction should be negative y direction, and it's that by default. The global should be true. Yeah. So it's fine. I'm pretty scared. We'll look at that later. Then we'll come to the load size. The load size for these should be uh, can be found by multiplying the section area in square meters and the density in newton per cubic meters, given a unit called newton per meter, which is what we want. Put in the load size, and we should get this result. So here you can see our loads on all element. Let's up the scale a little bit to one. It's by default 0 0.1. You can see it a little better here. That looks right. Then we're going to add our non-uniform uh, load on top of this. Um, we can do this. Again, we use this pi element load. Our indices, that's our new indices from the subdivide function, the uh, subdivide component. Pi nodes is also that. No pi elements is also that. Direction is still a very negative y direction. And, and it should be global. You can put the preview to one here as well. So we can compare. And then we come to the load size. Uh, I used the graph mapper to get visible visual view of the loads. So if you want to make a linear distribution of the load, take the range and the list length. So we have Forty elements. And let's get forty-one values. So it's always like that. So we just need to say x minus one. Can put this in here. And now we got ten. No, oh, sorry, forty values in here, from zero to one. So we want our maximum to be three thousand newton per meter. Okay, so we can just multiply this value here. Put this on as the load size. So now we can see 3000 up here and zero on the last one. You could also remove the first and the last to get more, maybe a more uh, precise uh, calculation. Or take the middle value. So the run. Find element calculation only takes one element and it takes one input for each of these path strings. So we need to combine these two loads. For that, we can use this component that combines these two. Take our pi nodes, our pi elements, and let me take our pi element load and our pi element load here. 
put the previous scale treatment compared to one here. You can see it adds the two loads together to get one load. We can put this in here. Let me connect all our pi nodes. Our pi elements. Our pi degrees of freedom. And materials. And our supports. Cut them over here. And now we should be able to run this calculation. Let's see. This. And you can see the deformation here. Maybe we should scale that up a bit to 100. Right now it's 20 by default. See it a little better. So now we got our deformation. Got our reaction forces, normal forces, shear forces, bending moment, and we can plot these as well. If we take the curve, you can see what we've got here. Got our normal plot here, our shear forces, oh, sorry, our shear plot. See that here, our bending moment, oh, <laughs> the plot here. And then if we want to see some color visualization of this, we can use this one. Taking our bending moments, of lines for example, and we get a nice color plot of this. Going from blue to red, where green is zero, if this is set to false, absolute values. If you don't want to, if you want to use uh, absolute values, then it goes from then blue is zero, and we can see that here how this looks. So the plugin contains possible to add node load as well. We um, can put one on here. Take a, let's take a C, put it on five, for example. Negative y direction before. four. Let's see. See that's fine. So it should be five thousand newton. Set previous scale to one to be able to compare. Let's see. It puts on the load here. It's pretty large. Let's see how the this develops. If we put in the pi node load here. So the calculation time. didn't look like it did so much to that, but we can maybe see a difference in the deformation here. Yeah, I see a little little more deformation, could see as much in the moment plot. So that's it for me. I hope you liked the video. I hope you liked the plugin. Feel free to write comments in the section below. Thank you for watching.